I E L T S class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody's having a good start to their weekend. Students, in this class, we are looking at speaking part one, some practice and strategy. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class coming up for you in about 90 minutes that will focus on the reading section. While we wait for some of our members to join in, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, do visit us at G. I E L T S help dot com. Hi, Abhishek. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well also. Uh, students, I'll quickly show you our websites. Uh, this is what the academic looks like here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join our premium package. And this is the general website here with the green background. Click that big red button to join the premium package there. On both of those websites, you have access to over 100 hours of HD video lessons. Of course, help with the speaking section, as well as a fully interactive course, a mobile application, uh, and six original practice exams. Hi, Tito. Abhishek, I'm happy that you're doing all right. Boomy, nice, okay. There comes all of our members joining in. I'm sure a few more will hop in soon. Uh, if anybody has questions about the exam or about our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, you can uh, get our uh, practice exams from Amazon for academic students. Search for AEHELP's academic IELTS. And for general students, search for GELP's general IELTS. You can actually even find uh, our TOEFL uh, exams on Amazon as well for those doing TOEFL. Uh, Pedro, Angel, Garcia Lopez. Hi, long time. You haven't joined the chat, Pedro. Happy to have you. All right, everyone. So again, uh, speaking part one in this class. Then next class in 90 minutes will be a reading, academic reading, but useful, of course, for the other sections as well. Uh, members, this is a speaking class. Viewers, so make sure to speak. Speak and repeat as much as possible. So copy my intonation, copy my enunciation. When you hear new words, write them down, add them to your vocabulary list. Let's get cracking. You'll get some nice focused attention, members, for the speaking today. Uh, let's warm up those speaking brain cells, the neurons of English that we have. Let's get going with some of the uh, starter questions. So uh, again, members, of course, as you know, the speaking is about 12 minutes, 13 minutes interview face to face. And you have three parts in part one. You'll introduce yourself. You'll talk about some general topic that's connected to you. Let's do that now. So, um, examiner questions. Uh, what is your full name? All right. Roshni, Vatsal, Pedro, Bumi, Abhishek, Tito, Ferdovs, and Elena. What is your full name? Please give me your full name. Again, I encourage you to try different ways to explain your name in English, just so that you can do this naturally, quickly, and with confidence. Okay, so what is your full name? Give me a nice answer for this one. Bhumi says, my family name is Chutbar and my given name is Bhumika. Please just call me Bhumika. That works, Bhumi. Sure. Uh, Bhumi, do you go by Bhumika or Bhumi? Because then you can say, please call me Bhumi for short or Bahumi for short. Not sure if you pronounce that H. Uh, Tito says, my full name is Ahatizaz Sharfraz, but you can call me by my nickname, Tito. Okay, good. Tito, I hope I'm pronouncing those somewhat accurately. 
Um, Ferdovs says, my complete name is Nabiev Ferdovs, and you can call me by my Russian nickname, which is Fedya. All right. I like it. And Ferdovs, I like how you said it's your Russian nickname. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, capital R on Russia, right? Uh, Pedro says, my full name is Pedro Angel Garcia Lopez, as it is indicated in my passport. Very good, Pedro. Like it. Okay, different again. Effective. Abhishek. My full name is Abhishek Jane. Please call me by my first name, which is Abhishek. Um, first given name? Yeah, you can say that, Abhishek. First given name, uh, especially when we have a middle name. My middle name is Peter, so I never use it. Uh, Elena says, my first name is Elena and my last name is Maury. Please call me Elena. Simple, clear, to the point, Elena. It works. Practice pronunciation fluency. Vatsal. My name is Vatsal Kathriya, which is kept by my elder sister. Not sure what you mean by that, Vatsal, the witch is kept by my elder sister. So careful not to go into a tricky situation. Or if you do, make sure you can explain that clearly. Um, Roshni says, my last name is Kunte and my given name is Roshni. Please call me by my first name, which is Roshni. Uh, nice, Roshni. That's really good. I like how you said given name Roshni. Please call me by my first name which is Roshni. Uh, good. Oh, Bumi. So you don't pronounce the H. So it's not Bahumi. It's just Bumi. Okay, cool. I'll remember that for the future. Thanks for clearing that up. I'm glad you caught that and reflected on that, Bumi. Um, yeah, so Bumi, you can say that. Uh, just call me Bumi for short. You can definitely use that. All right. Um, so repeat after me. My full name is Andrew McLeod. Please just call me by my given name, Andrew. All right. So repeat after me. Work on fluency. Uh, what is your full name? My full name is Andrew McLeod. Please just call me by my given name, Andrew. I had a very good friend in high school named Andrew McLeod. All right, um, next question. May I see your identification? Always, students, that will be the first two questions or questions in the reverse order. So they'll ask for your identification, then your full name, or full name, then identification. So be ready for this. Um, let's see your answers. For Dob says, certainly, here you are, this one uh, which I used to register for this exam. Um, for Dobbs, I would say that a little bit differently to be natural. So for Dobbs, I would say, certainly, here's this one. Okay, for certainly, here's this one which I used to register for the exam. It's better if you can say what your ID is, for Dobbs. So here's my passport, here's my national ID card, here's my driver's license. Okay, my library card, right? Um, so whatever you used for your registration. Abhishek says, indeed, here you are. Uh, here is my passport. This is the same document I used to register for the exam. Yeah, Abhishek, also careful a little, little bit with the grammar, okay? Uh, it's okay to be clear and complete, but just be careful with the grammar. Tito says, yeah, here it is. This is my ID, which I used to register. Sorry, one more time, Tito. Yeah, here it is. This is my ID, which I used for registration purposes. Please take a look. Tito, that's really good. I'll take that one for today, okay? So yeah, sure. Here is my ID, which I used for registration purposes. Please take a look. Okay, it's good, Tito. That works. That's a nice one. So repeat after me, students. Uh, may I see your identification? Yeah, sure. Here is my ID, which I used for registration purposes. Please take a look. Nice, natural, fluent. Pedro says, yes, sure. Here you are. But Sal says, yes, absolutely. I brought my passport for identification. Vatsal, be really careful. Don't make a verb tense mistake in a simple sentence at the beginning like this, okay? So yes, absolutely, I brought, not bring. 
I brought because you already did that. You're here. You brought it. Okay. All right. Elena looking good. Boomy looking good. All right. Um, so now some icebreaker questions. So this is where the examiner will say, okay. Now I will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better. Uh, do you have a hobby? Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Do you have a hobby? Okay. A hobby is an activity that you do regularly, mostly for fun and interest. Okay. Such as collecting stamps, uh, reading certain types of books, collecting comics, watching a specific genre of movies or making movies. Okay. All right. Uh, Tito says, yeah, I have a few different hobbies. I play video games and watch Netflix series for fun. In my leisure time, it's a nice way to relieve stress. Like yesterday, I played a couple hours of Call of Duty and it was really enjoyable. Okay, Tito, I made a couple of corrections there. I hope you paid attention. Uh, members, definitely uh, take a look at the uh, time stamp in the video when I'm correcting your sentences. Okay. Uh, Elena says, certainly I'm very much into reading books. I would definitely say that this is my favorite uh, pastime. Elena, this is where you can throw in an example. So I highly encourage you, Elena, to throw in a, a quick, smooth little example, what book you're reading right now. Okay. I'd really like to hear that just so I can give you a little bit better mark for cohesion, complete answers and so on. Okay. Uh, Roshni says, yes, I have a hobby uh, to play badminton every day in the evening for one hour with my best, best friend Somo because it keeps me active and also helps me release stress after a tough day. Very good, Roshni. Just a couple of slight adjustments. Um, Charlie. Says, yes. I have a hobby. Charlie, you make sure you don't forget your subject. In English, you need to have your subject, okay? So yes, I have a hobby. Uh, frequently, I read detective stories in my leisure time. Like last night after dinner, I read several pages of the book Conundrum, which is based on the death mystery of one of the greatest uh, leaders, Subhas Chandra Bose. Okay, that's good. Charlie, I like it. And I like how you stopped there. So you didn't keep going about the book because then you go off topic and then uh, the examiner will interrupt you. Okay. Abhishek says, one of my many hobbies is collecting coins and notes as I love to learn about history through the images on currency. Yesterday, I bought a coin from 1947. It's really amazing. Okay, Abhishek, nice. I like collecting coins too. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, learning history is really cool. I'm into collecting old Roman coins these days. Um, all right. Boomy uh, says, yes, I've, I've got a couple of hobbies. Uh, Boomy, remember, I've is going to be your present perfect. So you need your uh, past participle. So I've got a couple of hobbies, which I like to do in my leisure time, such as painting... Um, abstract images and watching movies. Last Sunday, I went to watch the new release, uh, newly released comedy fantasy movie with my family. Okay, Boomy, good. Um, Boomy, careful with your adjectives, adverbs. So abstract is um, often used, especially when we're talking about painting as an adjective. So abstract paintings or painting abstract pictures, okay? and then newly released comedy fantasy movie. All right. Okay. But not bad. Um, for Dov says, absolutely. My hobby is cycling as it not only helps me unwind, but also to improve my cardiovascular health. In this way, I kill two birds with one stone. All right. Good. Uh, nice use of idiomatic language for Dov's. Pedro says, yes, I have a couple of hobbies. Same thing, Pedro, that I said a moment ago, don't cut out the subject. Okay, you need the subject. Yes, I have a couple of hobbies. I like to play basketball in my leisure time. Also, I like to watch documentaries about politics. All right, Pedro. 
What kind of political doc are you watching these days? Throw in that example. Um, but Sal says, I have so many hobbies. I watch web series daily. I like to play cricket and to eat fast food. Uh, but Sal, I don't know if eating fast food is a hobby, but I'll take it. Um, maybe give me an example of that. Like every week I try a different fast food restaurant. This week I had Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, so Vatsal, if you tell me that, then I can understand how you mean that eating fast food is your hobby. Uh, if you say something strange, students, that's not clearly related to the topic, like Vatsal said that um, the hobby is eating fast food, uh, then you have to explain what you mean by that. Because eating fast food for most people is just eating. It's just doing an activity. It's not a hobby. But if you purposefully choose a different fast food restaurant each week to try, that could be considered a, a hobby. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, Elena is asking, should we just talk about one hobby or more? Um, you only need to talk about one, Elena. It's a good question because it's a hobby, uh, but you could mention more if you have more. So if one comes to mind, like for you, Elena, it was reading books and that's really your main hobby, then you can say that one hobby. It's okay. But if you have a couple and you want to mention both of them, that's fine also. Definitely though, Elena, it's a good question because you don't want to start listing four or five hobbies. That would be too much and most likely the examiner would interrupt you. So one, maybe two, maybe three, but no more. Okay, one, maybe two, maybe three, but no more. If you start talking about, oh, I play badminton. Also, I like other sports like uh, basketball, plus I collect coins and comics. Uh, furthermore, I go for strolls in the park every Sunday. It's also part of my, then the examiner will be like, uh, did you misunderstand me and think that I'm talking about activities? So don't overdo it. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, yes, I do. I've got a couple of hobbies that I pursue in my leisure time. Uh, one is collecting coins. And the other is playing... Um, football with my friends on the weekend. And yes, students, sports can be considered a hobby. I often get this question like, are sports hobbies or is it just playing sports? Um, sports can be considered a hobby if you do it regularly and it's not for the purpose of making money or being competitive, okay? Uh, so if you're doing it for money, then it's more of a job at that point. It could be your hobby too, but then it's more of a job. So yes, I do. I've got a couple of hobbies that I pursue in my leisure time. One is collecting coin coins and the other is playing football with my friends on the weekend. Uh, the former um, keeps my mind sharp as where the latter... Uh, keeps me physically fit. In fact, I just had a great game yesterday and scored a couple of goals and scored two goals. Don't want to repeat couple. All right, uh, repeat after me. Do you have a hobby? Yes, I do. I've got a couple of hobbies that I pursue in my leisure time. One is collecting coins and the other is playing football with my friends on the weekend. The former keeps my mind sharp as where the latter keeps me physically fit. In fact, I just had a great game yesterday and scored two goals. Okay, um, so answer, explain, example, as I always say, you can see that students, I really hope you're repeating me. Okay, uh, members, are you repeating me when I read these questions and answers? Yes or no? <laughs> I've never actually asked the members if you're taking a moment to repeat me. I want to make sure that you're keeping flow with me. So Abhishek says yes. Okay. 
And the follow-up question I have is, are you able to repeat? So when I'm speaking at this natural pace or speed and I read or say this much information, are you able to keep up and follow? And then the third question, okay, is uh, are you repeating me by listening to what I say or are you repeating me by reading the board? If you can, try to repeat me without reading. So try to repeat me just from what you hear, okay? And also repeat the question, not just the answer, all right? Uh, Bumi says, yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it loud or aloud. That's good, Bumi. Do it aloud. So don't just do it quietly. Do it aloud, okay? Tito says reading. Yeah, Tito, try to do it just from listening if you can. So try to take your gaze off the screen and then see if you can repeat it, uh, repeat what I say without looking at the text. If you're having troubles doing it that way, then look at the text, okay? All right. But that's good. I'm, I'm happy to see that you are doing this. That's fantastic. Okay. All right. Uh, next uh, icebreaker question. What will you do after this exam? Elena says, no, sometimes you are very fluent. I cannot follow you. I follow you by reading the board. Okay, Elena. Yeah, I understand that. I I'm trying to, of course, not go too fast, but my speed of speech is natural. So some native speakers speak faster, some slower. I'm really focusing on getting that kind of middle, middle ground, okay? All right, uh, so let's see what students came up with for this question. So again, the question is, what will you do after this exam? Uh, Pedro says, I will go with my family to have lunch. I would like to spend the evening with them. I couldn't spend too much time with them during these months because I have been studying for the IELTS. Uh, Pedro, really nice grammar for the most part. Uh, Pedro, I couldn't spend too much time would be T-O-O, -O, too much time, T-O-O. -O. Okay. But otherwise, a really nice uh, response, Pedro, and a good range of grammar. I see present perfect in there. I see uh, past condition. So good. Uh, Tito says, probably after this exam, I'll apply for my uh, university, which requires IELTS. And after getting the evaluation, I can move on with my future plans to get my dream job. Yeah, uh, Tito, not bad. The word apply, application, application, it's a little bit confusing. Um, I guess you mean apply for work or for school. That's a little bit unclear. So careful with that. Okay. Um, Let's see. Roshni says, well, after this tough speaking exam, definitely. I'd love to enjoy a few quiet moments and relax. I believe that I deserve a treat. So I will go to a cafe and have a cold coffee with my elder brother and chit chat with him about this test. Right. So finish what you're saying there, Roshni. Um, good. Uh, Roshni, definitely I love to enjoy and relax. It, that's awkward. It doesn't make sense grammatically. So definitely I'd love to enjoy and relax for a few moments. Okay. We need to reword that. Uh, for Dobbs, when I'll have finished my interview in 15 minutes, I'll drive to kindergarten as today it's my turn to pick up the kids. And then I'm planning to go to an Italian restaurant to have a fun time with my family. Good for Dobbs. Um, yeah, it's okay to say I will, I will for Dobbs. In the speaking section, students do use contractions, okay? So that's my uh, tip. And uh, members, I can see that most of you are quite skilled in using these higher level grammar forms of present perfect and so on. Uh, I highly recommend practicing contractions for the speaking. So this is an important tip. OK, 
okay? It will help to boost your score. So for IELTS speaking, use contractions. Uh, of course, contractions means like I will becomes I'll, okay? Or I have got, uh, especially the present perfect in natural English, we contract it very frequently. Um, so I have got would be, I've got, okay? Now the trick, and this is an important trick, is uh, make sure to enunciate your contractions. Okay, especially when you're practicing them in the beginning. One difficulty I find with some uh, English as second language speakers is that uh, they don't enunciate their contraction, so it's hard to catch them. If it's hard to catch the contraction, it can become very confusing for the listener. So when you're practicing at home, really enunciate like, I'll have finished my interview in 15 minutes. I'll drive to kindergarten. And then as you practice this more and more in your speech, it will become softer. So you'll say, I'll. So I'll have finished my interview in 15 minutes. I'll drive to kindergarten. But the sound will be there. In the beginning, enunciate them a little bit more. Okay. So when I'll have finished my interview in 15 minutes, I'll drive to kindergarten as today it's my turn to pick up the kids. Okay. All right. Is that clear? Is that clear members on the contractions? Uh, this will increase. So this will increase your grammar range and pronunciation scores. All right. Okay, cool. I'm glad that's clear. All right. Uh, let's get into uh, some other questions. So I'll uh, give you an answer for this one before we hurry along. What will you do after this exam? Well, I suppose after I'm done this interview, I'll go for lunch as I'm famished and being nervous is just making me more hungry. Then In the evening, I will go and watch a movie with some friends for some well-deserved fun and entertainment. All right. Yeah, let's fix that. All right, uh, repeat after me. What will you do after this exam? Well, I suppose after I'm done this interview, I'll go for lunch as I'm famished and being nervous is just making me hungrier. Then in the evening, I will go and watch a movie with some friends for some well-deserved fun and entertainment. All right. Now, the examiner will say, okay, that is, uh, let's continue with part one. Now, I will ask you some more questions on a general topic. Uh, let's talk about health. How often do you exercise? How often do you exercise? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. How often do you exercise? 
just adjusting our lighting here, make it a little bit better. All right, Himan says, Himan, welcome to the class. Uh, I've planned to watch a new movie which was released yesterday. It's a historical film set in the 1600s. Today morning, I read a fantastic review about it and it also stars my favorite actor. Okay, Hemant, I think that's for the previous question. Uh, careful with your grammar, careful not to overcomplicate. Uh, Tito says, to be honest, um, usually I don't get time to exercise, probably because of uh, my work and daily routine, but I do work out whenever I have time to do so, like cardio and push-ups. Um, Tito, you're speaking a lot, but you're not really answering my question. Uh, how often, I get that you don't do it often, so not as often as you like, but Tito, I still don't know how often that is. Um, is it once a week, once a month? So try to be a little bit more quantitative with these kinds of questions. Boomi Chutbar says, I mostly go for exercise three to four times a week uh, and go for walks and stretching in the garden near my home. Um, it's about five minutes on foot. Uh, Boomi, careful with your grammar. Okay, so I go for exercise three to four times a week, which involves walking and stretching in a garden near my home about five minutes on foot. Okay, Boomi. Charlie says, I do exercise on a daily basis. I spend one hour in the morning in a nearby gym to stretch my body. Uh, like before coming to this exam, uh, I did that. Okay, Charlie, don't repeat the same sentence again and again. It's awkward. All right. Okay. For Dobbs says, I frequently exercise on Monday and Sunday. I go swimming and on uh, Saturday and Wednesday, I visit my local gym. Uh, the manager subsidizes my gym membership. Uh, so I take advantage of this and work out as much as I can. Okay, for Dobbs, it's okay to mention that the manager subsidizes your gym membership but connect that to the original question of how often. So finish that statement with, so I go as often as I can, okay? Uh, Hemant says, I exercise every morning for 25 to 30 minutes. I start with simple yoga, followed by some stretches, and then power yoga to build strength. Okay, Hemant, careful with the details. Pedro says, I like to exercise three times a week. Uh, I like to be active and do as much as I can. Uh, Pedro, uh, focus on your explanations and examples, okay? So what kind of exercise do you do three times a week? Do you go cycling, swimming? Do you go to the gym, aerobics, yoga, uh, rock climbing? What do you do, right? So here you'll get a sense of what I do. So I frequently exercise. Uh, I work out five to six times each week. I not only go to the gym, and lift weights, but also every other day I go for an 8K run. I find that in this way I can improve my overall strength and uh, cardio. Just yesterday, I ran around Margit Island, and that's actually what I do. All right, so again, answer, explain, example. That's always what you're going for, right? Uh, so how often do you exercise? I frequently exercise. 
I work out five to six times each week. I not only go to the gym and lift weights, but also every other day I go for an 8K run. I find that this, in this way, I can improve my overall strength and cardio. Just yesterday, I ran around Margate Island. One more time. And Elena, I'm listening to your words in my ears, so um, to maybe slow down just a little bit on the speaking uh, so that you can repeat me a little bit better. I do want to push you for natural speed, but there's a range of natural speed. So one more time. I frequently exercise. I work out five to six times each week. I not only go to the gym and lift weights, but also every other day I go for an 8K run. I find that in this way I can improve my overall strength and cardio. Just yesterday I ran around Margate Island. It's a very nice running track there. Um, Elena, what, do, what is the meaning of every other day? It means every second day. So each day, every other day. So that would mean like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, every other day. Okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, every other days. Yeah, alternating days, not alternative days, Elena, alternating days. But we don't say alternating days, we say every other day. So I'll put it up here, okay? Good question. Every other day means every second day. Okay. Every second day. Yeah, students, if you have questions, members, these are the best classes to ask me. Okay. All right. Abhishek says, well, every morning between 9 to 11 a.m., I hit the gym for two hours, which is five blocks from my flat. Not only does it help me relax from my hectic schedule, but also keeps me fit. Very nice, Abhishek. I like how you said I hit the gym. It's a nice natural expression. Fantastic. Okay. Next question. Good, members. Good. Let's keep rolling. You're doing a fantastic job. What do you eat to be healthy? So what do you eat? To be healthy, give me a nice full sentence for this one, okay? All right. Tito says, I'm really into fresh salads and fruits for staying healthy. And after gaining a lot of weight, I started to eat uh, healthy salads with one spoon of apple cider vinegar. Okay, good. Yeah, that cleanses the body, right, Tito? Um, I like it. Okay, so I'm really into fresh salads and fruits for staying healthy, especially after gaining too much weight. Okay, uh, instead of the and, Tito, I would say especially after gaining too much weight these past few years. Now I started to eat healthier foods like a salad with a spoon of apple cider vinegar. Good. Uh, Ferdov says, I used to consume junk food two years ago, but nowadays... I not only eat homemade foods, but also fruits and vegetables. This diet has shown its value as it is both nutritious and energetic. Um, for Dobbs, it's a little bit awkward the way that you're giving that answer, uh, especially since you start with the negative. It's confusing. I used to consume junk food two years ago. It's like, ooh, okay. So I would do it a little bit differently for Dobbs. I would say, well, these days I'm really into homemade uh, foods. I eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, uh, not only because it's nutritious, but also because it gives me energy. 
And I've been doing much more of this uh, since last year. Before that, I consumed too much junk food and felt terrible. Okay, so maybe at the end for Dobbs, you can give the contra, not at the beginning. Okay, I don't recommend it. So students, answer directly. Okay, that's going to be a tip for you today because I know that can make a big difference in your IELTS score. So uh, here's an important strategy, okay, for the speaking. And this is a, I mean, I call it a strategy for the IELTS speaking, but it's also communication strategy. You'll find that your communication will be better received when you uh, answer questions directly in regards to what you are asked. So what do you eat to be healthy? I eat fruits and vegetables every day to keep fit. Okay, is that clear, members? I, I really want you to reflect on that for me. So is that clear what I mean by speak directly right away? Then you can expand, but directly answer the question right away so that the examiner can mark off that coherence mark. Okay, does that make sense? So especially for the exam, I mean, it, it will help you in everyday communication as well, but especially for the exam, it's really important to give a direct answer. What do you eat to be healthy? I eat fruits and vegetables every day to keep fit. Okay, so direct, right at it. All right, super important. Okay. Elena says, I always prefer home-cooked meals to stay fit. Not only do I eat at least two servings of fruits and vegetables each day, but also a bowl of meat, uh, which is full of protein and nutrition. On top of that, uh, I sometimes prefer to drink a glass of milk in the morning after coming back from my run. Very nice. Charlie, I eat fresh and nutritious vegetables and fruits to keep myself healthy. There's a nice direct answer, Charlie. Very good. Like today, for lunch, I ate a dish of spinach. Also, every afternoon, I eat a seasonal fruit. Very nice, Charlie. I really like that answer. Really good. Okay. Pedro says, I eat a wide range of vegetables and fruits, and also I like to eat superfoods like, super foods like nuts that give me energy that I need for the day. Good. Uh, Roshni says, oh gosh, to maintain health, I eat not only green veggies, but also dry sprouts in my brunch because it contains loads of nutrition and vitamins that help me to stay healthy, like my mom prepared a uh, nutty yogurt, <laughs> something like that, Roshni, for the finish. Okay, good. All right. Nice job, students. Let's keep going. Um, here's uh, my answer. Let's repeat this one as well. What do you eat to be healthy? I definitely pay attention to include a lot of greens in my diet. I eat a variety of fruits and vegetables such as lettuce, tomatoes, and onions to name a few. Also, I eat a multivitamin every morning. All right. Next question, do you do any special activities to improve your health? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Do you do any special activities to improve your health? Boomi says, yesterday night I had eaten a full bowl of mixed fruits like banana, apples, and grapes. I guess that's the end of what you were saying for the previous one, Boomi. That's good. Yeah, Roshni, so in your speaking, you can use to name a few. Don't use etc. and so on, but to name a few, it's okay. Uh, don't use that in the writing, though, Roshni. Okay, so to name a few. 
Uh, Tito says, well, I try to run whenever I come back from work and university, as well as I do bicycling uh, for cardio to stay healthy. Like yesterday, I ran for 10 minutes. Um, I think that can improve my physical health. Okay. Uh, yeah. So special activities would be something that's a little bit less common, Tito. So uh, maybe um, like um, you bike up the mountain uh, by your house, uh, which is a very steep hill. Okay. So it has to be something unique. I, I see that Pedro came up with something unique here. So uh, Pedro says, I do mindfulness and yoga training to improve my mental and physical health, which is a bit unusual, right? Okay. So sometimes people eat uh, certain types of fruits or vegetables that are kind of uh, unique, uh, like moringa. Okay. So, um, yes, I put, I think it's spelled moringa like that. Uh, or maybe moringa. Yeah. So yes, I put moringa in my protein shake every morning after I do stretch yoga to maintain a high level of health and a strong metabolism. Okay. If you don't do anything unique, then you could say something like, uh, well, I don't really do any unique activities to stay fit other than the exercise routine that I mentioned earlier, okay? So again, for some questions in the IELTS, you might not have an answer, and it's okay to say, no, not really, uh, but just be really clear on your no answer. So if you're answering no, there's nothing unique that comes to my mind, which I do to stay fit, make that connection because you did say that you go for runs or you do yoga. So say other than the uh, exercise routine that I mentioned earlier. Okay. So these are two different possible answers here. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see some more. Uh, Hemant, I really like your answer. So Hemant says, yes, I fast every Thursday to detox my body. It helps me to maintain my sugar and cholesterol levels. Moreover, it helps me uh, with my medications as I follow the yoga format and fasting has special importance. Yeah, very good, Haman. So fasting would be a special activity, uh, not eating solid foods, only a liquid diet for a couple of days would be a special activity. Ferdov says, certainly I run and cycle I jog three kilometers every morning to enhance my vital signs. And on the weekends, I ride two hours in the morning to keep fit. That's great for Dobbs. Okay. So you're giving more detail to what you said before. That works as well. Okay. So Tito's asking a question. Other than running and cardio, well, nothing really comes to mind except for maybe. Right, Tito? So now you're getting the idea, I think. Uh, Charlie Sen says, as I had already mentioned, every day I spend about an hour at the gym where the gym instructor guides me to do special exercises. Uh, after coming home, I drink a glass of milk. Uh, what are the special exercises, Charlie? Can you describe those a little bit? That could get you some marks for lexical resource. All right. Um, yeah, Elena, absolutely. So Elena is asking a good question. Can we talk about mental health, like brain exercises? Absolutely you can. So your health is both physical and mental, and it's good to think outside the box, 
Elena, definitely. So, um, yes, absolutely, you can. So you could give an answer like this, Elena. So you could say, uh, certainly. Aside from physical uh, fitness, I do several uh, brain exercises in the day that some people would consider unique, uh, such as uh, men practice <laughs> Mensa uh, exams. Okay. Yeah, Elena, you can definitely do that. All right. So, well, I, oh, where am I? Certainly, aside from physical fitness, I do several brain exercises in the day that some people would consider unique, such as practice Mensa exams. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what you have. Um, Boomi says, yes, I uh, run on the treadmill and meditate aside from walking, which not only improves my cardiovascular system, but also decreases mental stress. Uh, Elena, I'm looking for what you wrote, but I don't see it with the mental exercise. I'll scroll up a little bit more, see if I can catch it. Uh, I don't see it, Elena. I think it might have gotten lost in the void of YouTube, if you added that to the chat. Um, all right, one more question here, members. One more. Let's do it together. Here we go. Have you ever felt unhealthy? Okay. Have you ever felt unhealthy? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Have you ever felt unhealthy? Yeah, Elena, that works. Yeah, absolutely. So for the previous one, Elena is saying, I often solve crossword puzzles to improve my mental health. It's a kind of brain exercise. It not only stimulates my brain, but also enriches my vocabulary, which is helpful to stand out in this exam. Yeah, Elena, that works just fine. Very nice. So have you ever felt unhealthy? Unfortunately, yes. I've been out of health not so long ago. Back in 2018, I broke my left leg in a game of floor hockey and for the following six months, I gained a lot of weight because I couldn't exercise the same as usual. All right. So let's see what you have. Uh, Tito says, yeah, about a year ago, as I told you, I gained too much weight and then I decided to join a gym. Now I've been exercising since then in that gym whenever I get the time. So I've lost some pounds. Not however, Tito, it's not a contrast there. It's an addition. Therefore, I've lost some pounds. Uh, Ferdov says, I noticed that I'd got issues with my body two years ago when I used to consume junk food, as I mentioned earlier. From that time, I've been trying to eat healthier. Very good, Ferdov's. Okay. Uh, I have, present perfect. Use the contraction, students. Use the contraction. Elena says, yes, I've felt unfit when I was in my high school. I often ate junk food like pizza burgers, and I found that I put on five kilos in one month. Wow. Okay, Charlie says, yes, several times I've felt unhealthy. Like last November during the season change, I had a fever and I felt unhealthy and weak. Charlie, good. Hermant says, in my recent trip to Ley, I felt dizzy and unhealthy since it's at 15,000 feet above sea level. So I had to visit the nearest hospital 
to take some medication. Okay, Hamant, that works too. Good. All right. Uh, this is my answer here. Repeat after me. Have you ever felt unhealthy? Unfortunately, yes. I've been out of health not so long ago. Back in 2018, I broke my left leg in a game of floor hockey. And for the following six months, I gained a lot of weight because I couldn't exercise the same as usual. All right, let's use that. I've been out of shape. That's a very common expression for feeling unhealthy or unfit. I've been out of shape. To be out of shape. Out of shape. All right. So one more time, just this first bit here, students. Unfortunately, yes, I've been out of shape not so long ago. Back in 2018, I broke my left leg in a game of floor hockey, and for the following six months, I gained a lot of weight because I couldn't exercise the same as usual. All right, then there's a little bit of a follow-up question. These are rare in part one, but they can happen. So the examiner might ask you, what did you do? And then we have a conditional question here as well. If you could change one part of your life to be healthier, what would it be? I'll leave these questions to you to practice at home. Members, you did a great job in this class. Fantastic interaction. Great use of grammar. Beautiful vocabulary range. I'm really liking what you're putting down, members. Good for you. Good job, really. You've really improved. A lot of you are making great progress. I can, I can absolutely see the way that your um, grammar, your expressive style, your natural language is improving. So that's really, really good. Keep it up, students, and keep speaking, okay? Speak, speak, speak. Talk as much English as possible. For those of you who have family members at home, especially if they speak English, I highly, highly recommend uh, what I call the English hour, okay? So this is my last tip before we wrap up this class. Uh, and it's a really important one. So here we go. Uh, study strategy. Designate an English hour at home where everybody has to speak English. Like uh, Monday to Thursday from... Uh, 7 to 8 p.m. It's only an hour. If you think about it, all I've said here is four hours in our weekly, what, like 180 hours or something like that. So uh, designate an English hour, okay? The world speaks English. The language of business is English. The language of education is English. So using four hours of each week, to speak English within the family is healthy for anybody, even for very high-level English, uh, non-native English speakers, okay? So make sure to have that English hour. Okay, students, that's it. In 30 minutes, a reading session for everyone coming up. Bye for now. Hopefully, I'll see you soon.